Hi, Philosophe. Uh, I'm coming back to show you my stitchy spot. I'm just doing it at a different angle than when I normally stitch. I usually face the television, which is here to my right. But I thought instead of just showing a blank wall behind me, because I don't have a lot of my stitching stuff in this room, um, other than I have a little display here, I thought this would be a better backdrop. Um, before I show you the details of my st stitchy spot, I forgot that I wanted to mention a few floss tubers that I watched. I did speak about the first one, the Carolina Cross Stitchers, uh, Joy and Emma K. <laughs> Sorry, Emma K. Um, they are a mother daughter. Um, Emma K is expecting her first child. Um, so give them a watch. I think you'll really enjoy them. They just attended StitchCon. Next was Sarah's Stitchy Spot. Um, in her last video, she showed some prior finishes. She's been stitching a long, long time, and she did a gorgeous um, piece. I think she said like 40 years ago, and um, she gave it to her mother, and her mother has unfortunately passed, and she has it back, and she shared it in her last video. It was just stunning. So that's Sarah's Stitchy Spot, and her husband sings the intro to her videos. Then Hobbies of Holly, I've spoken about her before, but I wanted to, you probably saw it already. Uh, she did a wonderful studio tour. I think I wanna move in. <laughs> it was magnificent. Um, then I watched one more, the Periwinkle Stitcher. From She's from England and her name's Sean and she has adult daughter, so um, she has no children in the house. I believe they're all out um, and she stitches now and she's quilting. She, she has also embroidered and knits. Um, and Brenda and Laura, the serial starter, had mentioned her on their, uh, mentioned her on their video. And she said, they said, stop what you're doing, go watch her. Um, so I think a lot of people did because in one video she had 21,000 views. Isn't that amazing? So you probably all saw her already. But I thought I'd mention her just the same. She's a lovely woman and I really enjoyed her. I think she has two floss tubes out now and I really enjoyed watching them. Okay, I'm gonna move you a little bit so that I can get into the details of my stitching spot. See, blank wall. <laughs> I'm going to tilt the camera down a bit. And I have my piece in my Q-snap. And this is Liberty's Welcome by Plum Street. I stitched on it last night. I stitched the window outline. So now I'm filling in both sides before I fill in the background of the house. So let's see if I can. Sorry, I'm hoping I'm not getting you. Okay, I'm gonna... here we go. This is a, was a television table that we've had, I don't know, maybe when the boys had um, TVs in their room, the old fashioned type of TVs. And um, my husband doesn't throw anything away. And luckily for me, he didn't because um, it was a four sided table and he took off the bar in here and um, on the bottom so that I can pull it in really close to my stitching chair. And that's what I usually do. So here, that's a really good uh, vision of it. This is my, okay. I'm trying to figure out how to show it to you. Okay, how to focus, get in focus, sorry. This is my BenQ light. Um, I stitch with this every night uh, that I've received it. Uh, they gave it to me and they asked me to try it out and I had did a review on it oh, about a year or so ago. But ever since I received it, I use it every night that I stitch. And you just touch the top. It has um, where you can, a knob here that you can adjust the lighting on it. You hold it and it also um, changes. So let's just turn it off for now so it doesn't bother you. Okay, now I'm gonna tilt you down again. Okay, so that's right here in front of me. It 
hangs over my lighting, I bring it, I usually bring it down further when I'm stitching. Okay, just move that out for now. I have this magnetic, magnetic board and I purchased it from Amazon. It came, it will come with this. This came with something else. I believe it came with two of these um, line holders. No, this came from something else. It had a, a hard line holder that I found more difficult to use because the patterns were usually wider than this board. So I opted to just use these that I purchased from a different magnetic board. So basically, I put my pattern in here. I don't want to show the pattern, so I will cover it up as much as possible. Put my pattern here. Um, if I have to count lines, I will use this to mark off. I don't mark my patterns normally unless I make a photocopy of it. So, um, so I put that here. I stand it up. Yeah, you can see. Stand it up on the highest one. You have different options here. I, oh, I think I said I purchased it on Amazon and I have no idea, but the word that's on here is L-I-A-N-G-B-A-O number 616. I'll put it in the description box if anybody is interested. I don't have it linked up at, in, um, at anything. So, But I think what I did was I just Googled magnetic um, paper, paper holder maybe. So I will put my pattern there, all my magnets there. I have my um, one from the 2019 Floss Tube Retreat, my needle minder. I put it here. I have these that hold my fabric, these magnetic cords that a lovely viewer shared with me. I use them all the time and I usually set my needle on one of them. I have two here. So this one's on this one. Um, if there's a lot of colors to be stitched with, I'll choose like these are the three for the house, the window frame, the shutters and the background. I, I pull them out from my stash of colors. I have a little box here that came from Celestial Tees, tees um, many, many years ago. I just happened to have saved it. And um, this needle minder was given to me by Emily C of Eclectic, Eclectic Possessions, Eclectic Stitch. I forget her um, flaws too, but Emily C. And um, for his eye is on the sparrow. And I sometimes put needles here that I'm using. I have a bunch of needles inside here. I have a stab nabbit. Uh, those of you that don't know that, it's sold in with two sizes. Let's see, I'll do it against the, there you go, the dark chair. You can see one's a little bit thicker than the other. And this is, if you notice, a, a, a stitch that's not just perfectly, laying perfectly, you can push. I usually use the smallest one and I kind of try to push it in the corner of the stitch and try to make it lay a little bit better if necessary. And then I have my trusty, um, Seam, seam ripper, oops, <laughs> seam ripper. And I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. This has a rubber top to get any of the fuzz that's left behind when you're um, frogging. <laughs> and I keep that um, here. Cause, and, oh, and then when I get in, um, this is, I think it works for me like maybe 90, 3% of the time. Um, if I get a knot in my thread, I put a regular quilting needle, it has a very sharp point. I put it in the knot and sometimes I just pull and it just gives it enough that it releases the knot. Doesn't always work, but um, many, many times it works for me. And that's why I keep a quilting needle here. I have a pair of uh, scissors. These are bent up so that um, I can stitch, cut away from the, uh, the back threads. And that's basically all I have. And then what I do do is, do do? <laughs> what I do is when I'm zooming with um, my cross stitch 
buddies from retreat. I have my um, laptop here and, and my pattern here. And I basically have everything right here that I possibly could need. I have a little bench on the side here. Um, in this case, I have all the other call for threads for the pattern. Sometimes if they have a lot of uh, um, floss, I will put it in a box. I'll label the box, put it under the table in my sewing room, stitching room, and pull out the whole box when I'm, when I'm stitching. This didn't have as many as some of the other ones. Um, so I just put them in, in the actual project bag. So how do I hold, I'm gonna put the light on. It might be a little dark here. I'll try to get it out of camera. So how I hold my Q-snap snap when I'm stitching. I bring the table very close to me. And um, I know I can do it from the top, but normally I go from the bottom. I go back down. Now you're saying how, how I'm holding it? I'm really not holding it. I'm just giving it support on my thumb. So I go back in, I secure. Like I said, I like working with two threads. And so as I'm searching on the bottom to find the hole, I just, I don't know, hold, I'm not grasping it. I'm just holding it in that, I'm holding it against my stomach. So I'm not really grasping it. I'm not putting any pressure on my hands or my wrist. And again, I'm just, it's on my thumb. And that's how I stitch when I have to hold it close to me. And just back and forth, in and out. And that's how I hold my Q-snap. At times, I will rest my Q-snap on this table. And I don't have to put any pressure on any part of my hand other than trying to find the hole from underneath and the hole from the top. And it's that simple where I lean it on the table and I lean it on myself and I just go in and out. And so I just did those four stitches right there. And that's how I hold, handle working on a Q-snap. Of course, if uh, now at a retreat at the library, the table is in front of me. I do the same thing, or uh, if I want it closer, I'll hold it, just having it leaning on this, or pressure here to hold it against my stomach, belly, stomach, um, and that's how it fell out of, the, and it just attached to the magnet here, and that's how I stitch on my stitchy spot. So I hope that was helpful to you. And if you have any questions, please feel free. So as I said before, enjoy the 4th of July. All the best to everybody. Love you guys. Mwah.